This is Jay Big Ticket 23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to install a processor into a Lenovo ThinkStation P500 workstation. Now, the particular processor that we're going to install is located on GreenPCGamers.com under the P500 blog page. So, to find that page, all you have to do is go to GreenPCGamers.com. On the top of the page, click on the blog and search in the articles for P500. It's going to bring up an article called Lenovo ThinkStation P500 Gaming Computer and Other Hardware Upgrades. And so this page is going to show you a bunch of cool upgrades for your P500 workstation, whether it be processors, memory, graphics cards, NVMe, um, other um, accessories. Um, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff on here. All the information is free. Um, check it out. Um, but in our case, we're installing this E52637 V3 processor. All right, so let's get to the actual install. Before you upgrade your processor, you'll want to update your BIOS with the existing processor installed first. Uh, the reason being so that you can get any of the microcode updates that might not be on your system currently. So if you're if you're upgrading from like a E5 2603 V3 proc, it's even more important. Just just a good rule of thumb: upgrade your BIOS first. Um, once you've done that, you are ready to consider upgrading. Um, obviously, make sure you're going to install a processor that is supported in your P500 workstation. Again, go to greenpcgamers.com. We list um, known good working processors that are going to work on the system. Um, and so check it out and, and you'll be in good shape. So again, we're doing the E52637 V3 quad core 3.5 gigahertz proc. This proc we chose because it's high clock speed. Um, it's got a max turbo frequency of close to 4 gigahertz. Um, here's the step code if you want to buy it, SR202. And so here's our ThinkStation uh, P500 workstation. This is a refurb system. And we are upgrading from a low speed processor. Here's our E52637 V3 proc that we're going to install. And then we have some heat paste from Shinetsu Microside that we're going to use when we install that proc. So first thing you want to do is put the system on its side. Obviously unplug it as well. Remove the side panel like we just showed you. Next step is to remove this cooling shroud that's located right above the processor and the memory. So here's our processor. This is our heat sink. Our heat sink does have a fan on it. Uh, to remove the heat sink, we need to remove that fan connection to the motherboard. And then there's four screws. You can, you can remove these screws via a small flathead, or we're going to choose to use a, a small head Phillips screwdriver. All right, sorry for the shakiness on this, but we're just going to remove all four screws. Um, we try to avoid using power drills when removing heat sinks, uh, just because we don't want to snap the heads off of these screws, um, because the, these parts can be very expensive to replace. So we always do this by hand. Um, you have a lot more feel when you do it by hand. All right, so remove all four screws. Once you've done that, heat sink pulls right off. We have our old processor that we need to remove first. So we'll remove those retention clips. And you have to remove them in the same order that we did. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to remove the retention clips. And then I'm going to pause right here. You want to be very delicate with this part of the process. Um, you have to commit to grabbing the processor. Do not drop the processor because um, you'll bend the pins on the motherboard. Do not touch the pins on the motherboard. You have to be very careful. And you don't want any thermal grease to get in those pins. All right, so again, here's our processor that we're installing. Um, there are four little dimples that you have to line up on the system board to, to install this processor. And you can see the dimples on the processor slot as well. Again, don't touch the pins. If you touch those pins, you're going to be replacing your system board. Okay, so we're going to put our processor into place. Again, commit to it. Do not drop the processor. Just put the processor right in place. Line up those dimples like, you, like we've done. And then you'll be able to put your retention clips back down. So these retention clips should go down pretty easily. If they don't, that means the processor is probably not seated properly. So they should go down really, really easily. Now at this point, 
Uh, we do want to clean the old thermal grease off of the old heat sink. And you might be surprised if you have one of those alcohol pads that came with whatever processor that you purchased. Great, use it. If you don't, um, good old toilet paper will work. Uh, this is, uh, you know, not the super cheap toilet paper, but the but the uh, the decent the decent stuff. So toilet paper is awesome for removing old thermal grease. So get all that removed like so. And once it is removed, we're ready to apply our heat paste from Shinetsu Microsci to the processor. So we've got a one gram syringe here. We don't really need one gram for this. We really only need like a pen cap on top, right in the middle of the CPU. And once that CPU or once the heat sink is installed, that's gonna heat up and spread evenly across the processor. If you put a whole bunch of heat paste on this CPU when it gets hot, it's gonna ooze out the sides. So just pen cap right in the middle of it and you're in good shape. All right, we're putting our heat sink back on. Um, so all we have to do is tighten up all four screws again and then plug in our fan again to get power. If you forget to plug in the fan, system will hang on post and tell you that you need to plug in the power for your CPU fan. So, But uh, definitely remember to do it. Um, we don't want to overheat your system board um, and make sure that you hopefully tighten all these screws by hand so you don't snap off any of the screws. All right, again, sorry for the shaking. All right, so we're gonna plug our connector in for our CPU heatsink fan. And then from there, we are almost done with our installation. All right, so we had to put our cooling shroud back over the CPU and memory. And it should mount flush so you can put the side panel back on. And then we do need we do want to put our side panel back on. Like so. And next we're gonna go, we're gonna actually plug the system back in. We're gonna go into uh, the diagnostic utility that is installed. Now, if you have the updated BIOS, this is the diagnostic utility you're you're gonna see. Um, and then we're gonna go to on the right side, system information. And here is our CPU. So um, it's E52637V3 processor, uh, quad core, 3.5 gigahertz. Uh, it's gonna tell us that there are four cores, eight threads. Uh, they're saying max turbo frequency of four gigahertz. Uh, Intel says 3.7, so there may have been an update on that, but that's awesome. That's what we want, that's high clock speed. Um, you can use this CPU for so many different things and it's a great CPU for a, free, for a P500. All right, so now we've loaded into Windows 10. And we're just gonna verify uh, that we're seeing all of our threads. Um, again, it's a quad core proc because of there's eight threads. We see basically eight CPUs on our device manager. And then we're gonna go into our system and just verify that we're seeing our CPU installed as well. Everything looks good, no yellow exclamation points. Um, everything you know worked out perfectly on our install. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below. Um, also, if this video is helpful to you, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Um, and we do monthly giveaways on our Facebook page. So go to greenpcgamers.com on Facebook and like the page to qualify for the free monthly giveaways. Thank you so much for watching.